Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe, in which I'm your host, Herr Mokalavot. Now, it's May 1st, 1970, and we're doing fairly okay. Maybe not perfectly, but I think we're doing okay. Now, we have to talk about the Italian thorn. Let's see. Well, holding a cigarette with two fingers, Martin Borman looked at the map of Europe and its office with one more time. Since the Gibraltar Dam had become the Damocles sword menacingly hanging over Europe, it has been a nightmare not only for politicians, but for cartographers across the Reich. He focused his attention on the old nation of the Caesars and its vast colonial empire, noticing that almost nothing remained from its famous boot shape. Ungrateful dudes. We gave them weapons, taught them battle techniques, and endowed them with the knowledge of the <clears throat> Aryan race. We made them who they are now, Borman scornfully blew a puff of smoke over the Italian part of the map. On the other side of the table, Vata Havel kept scrambling through the papers of his file. I still remember how enthusiastic they were about the project, and they had the gall to shift the blame to us when it failed. Murmurs of approval filed the room, or filled the room, as the Reich's ministers agreed with Borman's assessments on the Italian treachery. There must be something about the Mediterranean race that makes him treacherous leeches, my dude, Balder von Schirach haughtily proclaimed, with a smirk of satisfaction. Havel grabbed the paper he was looking at and uh, looking for and closed the file. Fortunately, our ministry has developed approaches to deal with the issue. We can keep our current confrontational position to make sure that the Italians don't bite more than they can chew, however. We can also try a detente to keep cordial relations. It would be inconvenient for us if the Americans or the Japanese get a foothold on the continent. Whatever the case, they'll eventually come back to us crawling, but the final decision is yours my Fuhrer. Uh, von Schirach exclaimed. Bormann scanned the map once more, wondering what the best way to bend Italy to the likes the, uh, will. So, basically, I asked you guys yesterday whether we should do the menace a mountain away, or, so that that's confrontation, or we do break the ice, and which we do detente, and let's see, let's attempt a detente. He's showing true ruler Europe is. At the time of this recording, there's actually a lot more support. Instead of both of these, there's a lot more support for break the ice. So, we shall choose a detente. So good. But before we do that, we can finally do a Reforged Reich. Thank goodness. Success is finally upon the GGR, indeed. The infrastructure projects begun by Fuhrer Bormann's government have enabled him to fulfill his pledge to finally cure the plague of unemployment. The once useless masses of the Reich can now reap the benefits of plentiful employment opportunities and the unity pact is closer than ever before. Moreover, the promising news surrounding the Entscheidungsnetzwerk's increased efficiency proves their economy is truly reforged. Uh, reforged the Reich's economy. No longer shall Germany be seen as a sick man of the world. Ah, very good. Love it. And that takes 56 days. Well, actually, that's quite a quite a long time. Who knew investing your own country's GDP into your faction can do so what so much? Expand North Sea exploration. Ah yeah. Infrastructure modernization. Ah yeah. I feel like we've done, we've done every single place possible for infrastructure, but I guess not. Nothing down there, over here. We did finish with our research, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. We do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm. Uh, what else we got around here? Literally nothing else. Alright. Help the Baatists. I would love to, but there's not much right there. And 17.7%. Well, could be better, could be worse. I love this. 90, almost 99% of our workforce are skilled workforce. Workers. Slave population is a measly 14 million. Whilst 1.8, 5.8, 7.3, 6.4. Wow. Civilian austerity. Well, we would still continue to like. Ooh, 10.6%. Not bad. Keep slashing it. I want to make cut down the debt. Cut, 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 cut. Because eventually, we're going to have a few issues regarding uh, our economics. Or our economy. Which we're still building up a ton of civilian factories, even when we cut stuff, so it doesn't even really matter. But I'm still going to be building so much infrastructure, so I love it. And look at that. Oh, I missed Hamburg. Oh, how did I miss good old Hamburg? That's because it was a Goring or Speer held piece of garbage territory earlier. But no matter. No matter. Yeah, there's really not much else right here right now. Oh, there we go. Domestic infrastructure. Ah, another civilian factory and military factory. Ah! Military factory, invest, we don't really, you know what, maybe I won't do that, because it does cost more money when you build it up. We've got enough anti, well, we've got a lot of anti-air, holy cow. Um, plenty of guns for now. We actually have more than enough. This is very weird. 
I don't know what the, this 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 is, but like, we actually have enough of everything. This is very weird. And TNO, I almost never have enough of anything. Maybe we, we can get some more cast. Yeah, actually, there you go. We'll get some more cast, but this is extremely weird and uncomfortable because almost in every single campaign in TNO, we're always missing stuff. Always, 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 and I don't like that feeling. All right, twenty. Uh, what did we just get done? Is it military austerity? Yeah, we don't need that right now. So, after a forged reich, the impoverished and useless? Further decreasing your poverty rate? Oh, good! This increased employment of German workers has resulted in said workers spending more. This increased demand has caused more German firms to be open, which in turn hire more workers and restart the cycle. Nice. So, we got, we're getting that one. It's 1970 still, like I said. Let's grab some of this. And just in case things get really badly, let's get some more rubber, too. Because we could probably use more rubber. Yes, we can. Uh, yeah, not bad. Pretty good, I'd say, so far. Pretty darn good. Uh, let's go down to... What else can we do? 20. Uh, go about that by 5, maybe? There you go. Build a few more jet cast planes. The impoverished and useless. My god, the fear is a little god of economics. Those once thought to be the impoverished and useless of the GGR have found new meaning in their books, Gemein Schaff. Indeed, as the employment rate continues to improve, the Reich is on the fast track of having near 0% unemployment, as was the case in the golden days of our once beautiful realm. Once again, our future seems to be bright. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. Minus oh my gosh, minus 33 billion. What the heck? How do we get there? Alright, so that's okay. Open the Ecofisk? Sure. The Stratfjord? Yes. Anything else? Uh, well, we shouldn't do this one just because we already have the maximum amount of uh, stability that we can get anyway, so... There you go, you can do that. And don't want to forget this stuff too. Interactions. Alright, so try to max out conservative loyalty here. Military strength obviously is 0%. Um, um, um. So we're gonna max it out. Too bad you can't dismantle the, the uh, reformists. Alright, so is there anything else? It doesn't look like it. Seven might be the new. I'm just looking at this number up here. Seven for decisions. Might be the new thing that we can do, so. Yeah, I mean. We could, but. Meh. There you go. Integrated circuit computing. Nice. Well, let's finish all this up first. Even more synthetic fuel from refineries because something's probably going to hit and it's going to hurt us kind of hard. <sighs> Look at that, that's so beautiful. Oh, something else? No, no? Is that really normal? Yeah, I suppose so. Alright. Yeah, so I wish there was more we could do. But time for some coffee. Why not? You mean a lot of coffee. Ah, oh, my favorite drug. Caffeine. There was one common thing that or asking, did I actually send volunteers to authoritarian socialist countries? You bet I did. Because apparently, like, someone else said in the comments that Baatism or whatever, as, like, Baatists are much more closely aligned with fascists than what the game says. I don't know, but that's what I'm just kind of going to go off of what people said, so. It is what it is. So, cool. My apologies about that. My cat was outside my door wondering if he could come in. And I'm like, okay, sure. Why not? Ooh, what do we have over here? Uh, good. Ah, yes. Black market trading. Ah, look, 26%. Right, Pink? Be Pink. Ah, victory, victory, victory. That's so good. Man, these focuses. I'm so used to, like, 10-day, 35-day focuses. 56 days. That's such a long time. Come on, can we get some more global conflict here? Without conflict, I feel lost. Especially in a Hoi 4 game. Oh boy. Ah, 75%. How are they still not, like, loving us yet? Makes no sense. Alright, Bing. Uh oh, oh boy. Oh no. Oh no. The Iraq collapses into civil war. Oh boy. Haven't we done, had, haven't we done enough of this already? No, 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 no. It's time to get involved. Oh, please don't have the oil crisis. Please, 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 please. I just... Oh, Iraq is going on. Oh, is it... Here? No, okay. Um, yeah, we're doing pretty darn well, I'd say. 
Yeah, don't need to do that still. Cool. Oh, uh, cool. Cool. Uh, we have nothing around here. Uh, yes. Yes. All right, boys. Just like yesterday, we're going to send some volunteers and have a good old time. Who do we want to send? Handsome Axel? Let's go with Axel. How many volunteers can we send? 200 planes? Not bad, my friends. All right, so where are our fly boys? There you go. Oh, we only sent 20. Oh, boy. Um, well, that's okay. That's fine. Bank, you want to stay on my bed? Okay. Hang out. Have a good time. There you go. Oh, no. People don't want, the, want words. They want the sound of battle. The battle of destiny. Oh, boy. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh. Okay. You know that hurt her GDP? Cool. Uh, that really did hurt our GDP, but actually, that's a lot better than I thought it was going to be, Be actually, so. The crisis is Germany. The scene of a German p petrol station is no longer one of timidity and routine. Once a place where motorists would hastily make their pit stops and go on with their day, now a scene of chaos. Upon seeing every block with a petrol pump, a line of vehicles stretches endlessly into a queue, hoping and praying that they will win a turn at the pumps. Most, however, are turned away as many unfortunate souls are put forced to push their vehicles their fuel tanks dry and their engines lifeless off to the side of the road gas stations attendees and attendants rush outside or outdoors either to plaster no more fuel signs onto the sides of the road or replace the now outdated pricing figures with a higher sum the oil crisis has arrived already the economy of the wreck is feeling the full force of imminent economic collapse what began as a shortage of oil and a dramatic spike in the process or the prices has evolved into the absolute devolution of investor confidence in the german economy even the grand mega corporations such as ig farben and siemens brace for impact and rapidly prepare plans to downsize operations Day by day. More and more citizens find themselves jobless even as slave labor begins to lose its value. Not only do our future plans sit in jeopardy, so too close does the entire state of the German economy. There are no options on the table. Action must be taken. Current and future projects cannot continue. We shall focus upon combating the crisis at hand, or we shall find ourselves reeling for a century. My goodness. Our GDP growth decreases by a lot. Poverty rate begins to worsen. Um, but I'll, we'll do that once we finish up this one. Oh, we have 11 days, right? How many days do we have? We've got 13 days, so let's let the focus complete first. Get some more fuel from expanding the North Sea operations. Hopefully we don't use it all up there. And seize oil reserves. The Arabs will not like this. Our involvement will decrease by five. We'll get some more cash. Well, we could. I want to continue making sure that our involvement is very high. Beep, beep. I don't know. I can't very weird right now. I can't wait to get involved in Iraq. All right, so how's this looking? Ah, honestly, it's not that bad. Still, of course, I haven't clicked on this button, so we'll see what happens. Right, Pink? Pinky. Oh, he's in the sunlight. Okay, so it looks like the supply is pretty bad around here, but then again, they are attacking or defending. Ah, now we can see what's going on. Axel, Iraq must be stable. Let under Bughoff. Bugdorf. And these are just regular, your casual, regular liberal fascists. Ahmed Hassan Al Bakir. All right, my friend, let's go in and uh, wreck some booties. I'm not sure if we actually wreck booties, but you know what? I'm actually just sitting down here just because it's very dangerous. But it's actually the, probably the best place to do some serious, really good actions. We're probably gonna get attacked as well. Impoverished and useless. My goodness. Oh no! Wait. Why can we do this one? Oh, it's because we just unlocked the oil crisis. I'm like, oh my goodness. We As soon as we get there, we get locked out of it. Oh, wait. Can we do, can we do anything? Um, We, we are going to break the ice. Uh-oh. Well, then. Um, I'm not sure if we can do a focus. Can't... Okay, the Orphan Project. This time, Borman was not in the science fiction control room of Cyberson, but down its guts. He was wandering through an immense maze of stacked computers with wires seemingly strong at random across his path, forcing him to duck or clamber over them. Cable management has apparently not been anyone's priority. The oil crisis has affected many of his plans, but this was a gosh darn shame. While Cyberson's designers had done an impressive job with the Reich's finances, it seems that they were far less adept at managing their own. With belt tightening occurring across the Reich, funding had dried up. 
until Borman had finally been notified the company had gone under. At the outbreak of the crisis, the Entscheidung's network had undergone a period of upgrades and maintenance with only limited operational co capability. The additional computers that had been ordered lay piled next to a vast square of empty floor spaces, yet more cables lying in a great unordered mound. The technicians had moved on to greener pastures before it could be completed until the plans could be dug up and implemented. The whole system was running on limited capacity. His dream of an economist less economy was evidently further away than he dreamed. Hans gave me a swivel chair on, my, on the way out. This thing has been stunted. Oh boy. Well, at least we won this part of the Iraq war so far. Seriously, is there, is there nothing we could do? Oh, okay, now it's... Oh my goodness. Oh, what the heck? Okay, so it's really hard to see, but hot wind blowing. Please let us go back to the old book street. We didn't get to the one I wanted to do with all that stuff. Oh my goodness. A wind is stirring in the Middle East. What we are now calling the oil crisis has begun, and the whole region is on fire. E&I, the company holding and exploiting much of the Middle East oil reserves, has totally collapsed, leading to a global oil crisis. Oil prices have spiraling out of control. Production and exports are plummeting, and it looks like this is only the beginning. Saudi Arabia and other like-minded states and their spheres have attempted to crack down on the Ba'at revolutionaries, a diverse group of Republicans fighting to break the stranglehold and exploitation that the Saudis, Italians, and other foreign powers hold over their homes. Although this is a time of economic disaster for the Reich, it presents us an opportunity to establish a significant presence in the Middle East. If nothing else, this is an excellent time to, to support the Ba'atist revolutionaries and to destabilize the cursed Italians. Go right ahead. Well, this sucks. Uh, bug. Uh, I guess you might as well. Why not? Oh no, we can't do this either. Huh. All is well? Well, yeah. Um, investing 0% of GDP, how are we looking bad? Meaning the OKW? That's that's a tremendous hit to our GDP. It was over 10%, but still 4.2. I'm not complaining. Emergency meeting with OKW, which of course leads us here, mind Fuhrer. The nameless consultant preached to the cabinet. The barman rubbed his eyes. The man had been talking for 20 minutes now, and the effects of the oil crash, oil price crash in the Reich. All the information that had been drilled into his head a dozen times now. More. Generic. Sameness. The man's name didn't even stand out. Steiner? Balk? He couldn't remember. Enough, Borman folded his hands. I was called here for a briefing concerning the Middle East, not domestic affairs. I know how market prices work. Let me tell me about Syria, Iraq, and Persia. Ah, well, uh, apologies, sir. The man managed to stay composed and shuffled his massive binder of notes. What's important to us is that the status quo is breaking down in the Middle East. It's been for months, years. You could say this started with a conflict in Yemen, but sentiment has been bullying on the Middle East for decades now. Perhaps even longer. The speaker looked at Borman, who gave him a shrug. Ah, oh, well, you knew that. What's important? is that the revolutionaries, the Ba'atists, are fighting to overthrow the status quo. That is, of course, the Italians and Saudi hegemony in the region. Although our economy hurts, we have to look past temporary financial setbacks. Borman's face turned a shade of red, but before he could speak, the man continued. <clears throat> now, is the time for action. The Ba'atists oppose the Saudis, Italians, and various other regional players. Geopolitically, they are currently isolated. They have, however, already seen many successes, and would be much deadlier if they had some modern equipment. Without assistance, the Ba'atists will lose. There's too much pressure aligned against them. The situation looks different with our intervention. Starting with small arms and support equipment, we could, of course, increase our flow of supplies and consider boots on the grounds as the situation develops. What we need to keep in mind is victory for the Ba'atists means defeat for the Saudis, and more importantly, Italy. Italy has dealt a huge economic blow, well enough it will be felt for years, disrupting Saudi Arabia as an added bonus since they work closely with the Italians to maintain their hegemony. This is the moment we've been waiting for to shatter Italy's influence in the region. The man's speech came to an end, he took a deep breath. We may not have an opportunity like this again. And I would love to zoom in. Okay, so we can. It's, it's a little difficult though. Getting our hands bloody. Emergency policies? Why not? As the Swiss would say, Gott im Himmel. Once again, international conspiracy has subverted the economic power of the Reich and has plunged your country into depression. While the right to lash out of the lesser nations, who no doubt played a role in this treachery, is unquestionable, we must not let this this delay our response to the crisis. We will issue executive orders for emergency rationing policies and a freeze on bank withdrawals to limit panic. It won't do much, but it'll buy us time to think about our next step. I'll be honest, like, this is not bad. Like, earlier, like, we had a negative GDP growth for quite a while, and it's basically maybe slightly less interest rates, but honestly... I, I'm not complaining. I'm really, I can't complain about this. This is, this is, this is really good. And like yesterday, I'm not even doing anything. I just let our guys go ahead. And they just took out Mazul without me. Oil crisis? What oil crisis? The Ba'atis have won. As they should. Victory, victory. You know what? I love Borman. Daddy Borman is my friend. He is my favorite. Emergency policies. After that, liquidate our assets. Liquid reserves will be cleared. National debt increases. Um, I don't know. Pass expertise. I like that one. 
So during the last war, the Reich's raw material shortages were so pressing that they became the prop priority for Speer's economic projects. They necessitated considerable financial investment and drove our strategic military operations in Russia. With the Frank Empire and collapsed economy, however, our newfound abundance was seen as a liability. Then the oil crisis happened, which will put our old synthetic refineries back into action to keep supply up for the domestic sector and hopefully spur domestic involvement in an increasingly hobbled financial environment. Okay. Wow, we don't have a lot of political power, do we? So maybe we should stop spending so much of it. Nope. 4.4%. That's not bad. Uh, yellow fuels of fire. Uh, fuels of fuel. I'll tell you, Farmer Bowman said to his disappointed wife, the fear is on to something with this wraps thing. If we start early enough and with enough, we'll be rich. Gosh darn it, Otto. You wasted so much money on this wrap thing already. Why the heck did you want to buy more? This is much more than I required growing them out. I promise, if we start early enough, we'll make it big, Marta. We'll finally be rich, and then... Come on, Otto. People are going to starve from this. Less fuels making less foods means less... Making food means less food. Who's going to get the burn of it? That's the thing. The fear's got a solution for that, too. He's just going to cut slave rations a bit. That's all. Otto rested a bit, panting from his hard work planting wraps. Marta looked at his face. His eyes were full of hope for the first seven years. They're subhuman anyway, Marta sighed. <sighs> You'll never give up, even if it's a pipe dream. Wrangle the East? Ooh. Yeah, why not? For decades, the non aryan citizens of the Eastern Reichskommissariats have proven worryingly resistant to our rule, which has given our colonial administration no end of sleepless nights. In order to ensure our dominion over Europe's markets and resources remains viable, we must accept that the grand colonial experiment has failed in the present form. Only one thing is left to do. The GGR. So I'll assert the greater control over the administrations and raise the troops' quotas for regime-critical facilities. You know, I was thinking, because our soldiers are so strong, do you guys have any names for these guys? Like, Fall, Shimiega are, are cool and all, but like... What do you think would be a cool name? Since our guys, they are literally our extreme special forces that just win wars. Like, you set them to go, and they just bloody their hands and, like, win. Like, what would you think would be a cool names for at least some of our Falsham Yega divisions? This is so sad. I can't even do anything over here. So sad. That's not bad. 335. Economy's still growing, so can't really complain too much. Uh, ooh, involvement. Ah, oh, getting your hands dirty. It's time to get to work. The Baatist revolutionaries have risen up and they need to support. The Saudis and Italians have both started to send supplies and support to suppress the Baatists, so we have no time to waste. The Republicans need all the help they can get, and everything we can send them guns, supplies, even men are needed to ensure their victory. Much still needs to be prepared, however. Supply lines must be set up by sea, land, air, or all the above. Advisors and even expeditionary troops could and should be also deployed. Perhaps our greatest asset, the Luftwaffe, could also be deployed to directly support our and our allies' forces. Whatever we choose to focus on first, we must do so with haste. I'm, I'm ready. I, I'm ready. Let's go. Let's support them with haste. I, I, yeah, haste. Haste makes waste, but sometimes maybe not. Wrangle the east. Getting your hands dirty. Let's see, what's after this one? Ramping up production, our net debt will rise, new discoveries. Whispers of dissent. General Lieutenant Reinhard Gehlen, head of the Militische Abschirmdienst, Ab branch of the Ordnung Polizei, marched into the field's office with grave concern etched onto his blanched face. A thick black a briefcase rested by his side. Bowman was about to scold the man for not knocking, but restrained himself. Such a rude act doubtless spoke to the severity of the upcoming topic. Hi, Bowman. Yeah, then panted with a salute before placing the briefcase under the desk and pulling out a vast assortment of documents, folders, and tapes. He finally sat down, took a deep breath, and stared Borman straight in the eyes. My fear, I am, what am I about to say is a consequence of both research and speculation. He adjusted his square glasses. I have reason to believe that there is an internal conspiracy against your leadership, a conspiracy within the government itself. Borman stared back silently, grinding his teeth. Galen cleared his throat and ran through the evidence. I have tape recordings and the transcripts. <clears throat> I've obtained letters and diaries. I will admit that none of these evidence is solid enough to make any arrests, but I'm willing to accept that confirmation bias is at play. But I don't think we can take that chance. Bowman sat in silence for a few moments, staring at the documents before him. He's trying to coax me into pur purging his opponents. I won't fall for such a seat. Must investigate further. Let's go do that. And I want to do next. New discoveries. I think that'd be pretty good. Scientific development is a wonderful thing. Worth celebrating and even sponsoring, but only if it benefits the GGR, at least according to the Bormann. Fear of Bormann. We received a proposal co-written by our nation's top scientific and engineering authorities, which one which could turn a crisis into opportunity. Alternative sources of energy like wind power and photovoltaic, photovoltaic cells may lessen their dependence on foreign oil. It is a strange idea, but Bormann is enthralled by the idea of a civilian Wunderwaffen. Prototypes will be built in Niederlande and within our borders. If this works, the Reich may be yet saved by the miracle science, and this time it will not be delivered by high-altitude bombers. 
The investigation launches. You're right, Borman said through gritting his teeth as he scored the evidence. We can't take the chance. If there's any dissent in the government, it must be crushed like a bug. You have my permission to launch a full-scale investigation, effective immediately. Yes, my fear. Galen smiled, his eyes lighting up. I will use every means at my disposal. It will be completely clandestine, naturally. Naturally, Borman's mind raced with possibilities. Could it be true? Was there a shadowy force looking within the corridors of the Reichstag and the offices of the Reichskanzlei? Was the sense spreading up throughout his government? Just slightly out of reach, his, he ground his teeth harder. Who could be involved? Someone in the military? Someone in the cabinet? Who are these mere whispers of dissent or plots of disposition? A deposition. What? Stop grinding your teeth. That actually is really bad for your health. That's really, really not good for you, man. New discoveries, my friends. I love new discoveries, but we got about a week left for that. It's not looking good for the Reich. Actually, to be honest with you, no, it's looking okay for us. I'm waiting for Iraq to fall and collapse again, but... Volgestadt? We found the pundits. Ah, the bloodstained sand. Oh, hold on. Can we get this one? Good. Ah, Wagner stood in front of the map as... As a room filled with officers, he stood there trying to look confident and relaxed. It was a farce. Wagner was anything but calm. He bit the inside of his cheek. Stop shaking, idiot! He thought he had to get himself together. He hated presenting, but the General Obust entrusted Wagner to brief these men and give their instructions for the upcoming mission. The room was filled. The last of the NCOs sat down. Gentlemen, he began quietly. No one in the room looked up. The NCOs were making conversation and didn't notice. Wagner cleared his throat. Ahem, gentlemen. The whole room went silent. Better take the task at hand. We have all heard rumors that we may be may be deploying overseas soon. The rumors, Wagner's nerves began to settle, are true. Your men are the best the office corps has to offer, and you have been selected for the intervention force in the Middle East. The General Obust has been referring to you all as a new Africa Corps. The name is still pending. Wagner gave the men a second to process what he said. Many of the young faces still look shocked, some look proud. To ho hopefully answer some of your questions, you men will be leading boots on the ground, directly supporting the Ba'atist revolutionary movements scattered throughout the Middle East. That means some of you will be sent to Iran, to Syria, and so forth. Questions. The room was quiet. Great. All of Wagner's nemesis was gone. Now he stood in front with confidence. Now, it may seem odd to help zealous nobodies in the middle of a crisis at home. Maybe it is. But command sees an opportunity to hurt the Italians and boot their booties out of the Middle East. This means that we'll be fighting Saudi Arabia indirectly, so be prepared. Success means cutting Italy off from its largest cash cow, their oil. You're all sitting here. You've been handpicked, literally. You're about to embark upon a great crusade. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of Germans everywhere will march with you. You'll bring destruction upon the Italian Empire and security for our people. Be proud of that and be ready for others. Dismissed. We have full confidence in our courage. Well, my friends, Unternehmen, Deutsch Stoss, Ordnungspolizei, Militärische Abschirmdienst, to the Führer, top secret information regarding Unternehmen, Deutsch Stoss. Secret recording devices in the Reichstag reveal discontent among our reformist allies. Tapes 1 and 2 in the attached envelope contain audio from four separate conversations between party bureaucrats and Wehrmacht officers, who are each named on page 2 of the accompanying document. Criticisms include continued politi politicizations of the armed forces, aggressive foreign policy and lukewarm economic reform, Heil Bormann, Agent Kleiner Putz. Oh, Putz. Oh, well, who was this guy? Er, wasn't it at the beginning of this campaign? Or close to it, where when we selected Borman, we we figured out who Fuchs was. I thought, why aren't our allies complaining? Shut down this OS investigation. <sighs> I can't remember. I don't like this, and I, I already know what's going to happen somewhat. Like because this happens often enough that when I play this other campaigns, you see what the end result is. But ooh. but anyways, uh, let's see. Involvement in our, the conflict goes up. We'll be able to send one additional. Oh, if we can send an additional volunteer, two it just obliterates our enemies. But three? Oh yeah! It's been over two decades since a swastika flew in the cradle of humanity. It is only fitting that we send our eagle to rise above and over the birthplace of humanity. Well, we shall deploy German soldiers in limited numbers to areas where Ba'ath uh, revolutionaries are struggling to support them directly. We will only be able to send a limited number of men, but those that we do will have a huge impact on the outcome in many on outgoing, ongoing conflicts in the Middle East. Right now, the annual deficit is not looking great. It really isn't. But also, I did want to bring it to your attention. Off screen, I had to go do some other stuff. But regards, with, with our helicopters, we weren't using... I just attached helicopters. Before this, we weren't using them. But this gives us 126 more breakthrough when we're attacking. Th almost 58 more soft attack. 79 more hard attack almost. Better fuel capacity, better range, air defense, agility, ground attack, plus 42. Holy bad words. This, like, you saw how good we were doing before. This is just going to just destroy any, like, infantry division if we, when we send these divisions if we can again. God, I want to just 
shred our enemy's booties. Like, holy bad word. I forgot that attack helicopters are support companies now. So, I am excited. Please. Oh, I can't wait till Iran falls apart. Oh, my goodness, yes. But regardless. Uh, let's see, what is this? Heat of the Desert. Oh, that's not bad. The new core. Oh, they get Desert Fox, Hans Spidel, and Adolf Heusinger. The men, all men who bend their will. Two more additional units. Get rid of the troublesome. That might not be bad. I kind of like that. Uh, Agents and Rio de... Oh, it's not bad. Maybe we'll do that. Unternehmen and Schwarze Gold. Is it gold or geld? Schwarze Gold. Isn't it... Geld in German is money, if I remember correctly. Um, I mean, honestly, this is... Oh, GDP receive a small boost. It seems like it's a little late, because as you, as you saw, we're already done. We won everywhere, but let's go ramp up production some. Well, the delicate supply chain that keeps foreign oil flowing to German industries increasingly imperiled, it would be only wise to boost their own production as a safeguard. The Reichs can continue to foothold in the oil-rich region of the Caucasus will be key to the domestic ramp up. Massive expansion of our domestic facilities will enable a greater quantity of oil production and boost our domestic industry as a welcome side effect. The second report, Oldungspolizei Militischer Abschirmdienst to the Führer. New recording reveals further dissent amongst our reformist allies. Tapes 1 to 4 on the attached envelope contain audio between several leading reformist figures who are each named on pages 2 to 3 of the accompanying document. Conversations include dissatisfaction with a breakdown of dealings between the Führer and the reformists and accusations of betrayal. Agent Kana Fuchs. Complaints among our broke the trust. Let them swallow self pity. Disturbing developments. Galen must shadow these men and gather more intel. This is going to end very poorly for some people. But c'est la vie. It is what it is. C'est la vie. It is what it is. How do you say that in German? S is. Was? S is? I have no idea. It's been years since I've really studied German. We can barely cut down the debt, but you know what? As long as the GDP keeps growing and we can maintain our national debt, I'm okay with it. Current. Uh, actually. I, I don't want to increase this too much more right now. We're at 100% for a skilled workforce. I would love to do this. We actually, not that much uh, political power, too. Ooh, because I don't want to hurt our GDP anymore, and we we're barely getting any money, especially after we cut down, like... Oh man, my brain just stopped there, my apologies. We just cut down, you know, like, our construction, so the whispers grow louder. This is a summary of the reports filed by Agents Kahler, Wolf, Vetter, Hund, und uh, Fluglose Fledermaus. These agents were tasked with shadowing the reformist figures mentioned in my previous report. All three agents claimed to have witnessed several encounters between these figures and high-ranking conservatives within the party bureaucracy, all of whom are named on page 2-4 of this accompanying document. Agent Feta Hund details one conversation as displaying discontent over the Führer's handling of the military's plot. Heil Bowman. Have the bonds of this conspiracy entangled my conservative allies? Oh boy. Now, like, as you see here, I am, I am just maxing out conservative support at the cost of political power, which we are running out of. So, it's fine with me. Whatever. And uh, when's the next research done? Not soon enough. Ramping up production. Ooh, the power of the atom. Ooh, yes. In recent weeks, Fira Borman has found himself deeply concerned with the widespread electricity shortages caused by the GGRs and considerable lack of oil. These shortages have already incited a considerable public dissent, which threatens to spill over into violence on the streets. Thankfully, an old friend of the Reich is already here to save us from descending into riots of power of the atom. Massive expansions in budgetary funding and the enforced relaxation of safety standards will both boost the number and cost effectiveness of a new wave of reactors. We are particularly optimistic about what they call Hochleistungs Kanal reactors, or high powered channel type reactors, these reactors, of course, while unstable in certain testing conditions, have proven to be ridiculously cheap compared to the safer variants. On the wave of power the cheap atom provides, we will ride the crest to victory. We get three nuclear reactors. Awesome. History repeats. Rumors have floated to the surface of the Reichskanzlei like scum dislodged from the bottom of our murky lake. Conservative functionaries within the party were planning on establishing a new governmental committee dedicated to cutting through the bloated bureaucracy by working around various ministries with efficiency. The details were nebulous at best, but Bowman recognized a power grab when he saw it. After all, he himself had tried to establish a Dreyer Ausschuss in 1943 in an attempt to centralize power. The Dreyer Ausschuss uh, yeah, Suss, had failed, and with this new, new committee. Oh, boy. Oh, come on. Can, can someone else follow apart? I want... Oh, actually, can I, can I come down here? Actually, we did this... I did this in another campaign before. I think when I was playing Zwerble, and it was god-awful. But a meeting with a general lieutenant. I take a seat, general lieutenant. Borman ordered, placing, pacing around the room as he sucked on a cigar. Suck, suck. Gaia... Well, not Galen, did as he was told, and waited patiently. Borman took the cigar out of his mouth and narrowed his eyes. There are traitors in the Reich, general lieutenant. 
Treacherous rats scurrying through the corridors of the Reichstag and the Reichskanzler lies, spreading their disease while bumbling idiots step over them in ignorance. Your reports have proven that, and now credible rumors of this committee have emerged. How could I have been so blind? He ran a cigar into the glass ashtray and snarled. We need to mobilize the Orpo. Put it on high alert. These schemers want to control me like a puppet or throw me out of power altogether. I cannot take either chance. Your beliefs are well founded, my fear. Galen began, yet we sh should not act too rashly. Placing the Orpo on high alert may cause these schemers to ramp up their plans. Please allow me to continue my investigation with the utmost level of discretion. Is that worth the risk? To be mobilized, we must act with caution. Continue work inconspicuously. <sighs> yeah, I, I've been pretty inconspicuous about some a lot of things actually so far in this campaign, so it's probably best to end up like that. Anything for budget? Nope. And yeah, let's come back up here. Power of the Atom is a lot of fun. Oh, and we get some advanced artillery. It's still only 1970. It's almost 72, but you know, whatever. How about some better armor? Even though I much prefer helicopters at this point, and that's okay. Yeah, mm, I, I really want to use these gunships. They're going to just be... Oh, man, I can't wait to tear people up like with this. Ridiculously strong. And I love it. Harsh quotas? So be it. Before too long, the Reich has been lenient to the administrations of our Reich's commissariat. It's giving them leeway in the name of stability and political unity. It's an open secret. Now that the Reich's economy is spiraling into crisis, however, we must take extraordinary measures to stabilize the fragile economy. Harsh quotas shall be enforced on the Reich's commissariat's domestic energy and their resource extraction operations to combat the ongoing crisis. With any luck, we will push the Reich back to greatness on the backs of those who have bettered themselves through our mercy and they will know better than to complain. A letter by Lamplight. Reinhard Galen entered his home and turned on the lights. As always, he ran his hand over the dining table, inspecting the toilet, and peered inside the lounge tree sitting beside his bed. As always, he found no bugging devices. Galen dove his hand deep into his inner coat pocket and withdrew a small piece of paper. He had read it one more time just to make sure. While visiting Heinrich Müller's office, he had accidentally stumbled upon the letter, which had accidentally found its way into his folder he was carrying. He was planning on placing it back until his eyes scanned the contents and realized who it was addressed from. One of the high-ranking conservative bureaucrats who his agents had caught secretly conversing with the reformist officers. The letter itself held no other surprises, unfortunately, then again. Would Mueller bother conspiring with someone stupid enough to lay their intentions out in a letter? Another step closer to the truth. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, I wish we all was well. I wish we could build. The web grows wider. What correspondence would the chief of the Ordnung Polizei possibly have with such a man? Boban asked, staring out of the window with a grimace. The bulky pomposity of the Volkshalle was beginning to annoy him. The letter says little of no true, but then why would it? These conspirators would be foolish to communicate their schemes via letters. If these conservatives are conspiring with our so-called reformist allies, Galen nodded eagerly, why would they also bring Müller into the fold? He is one of the most powerful men in the Reich. He is, Bowman spat. He must be removed from his post immediately. Oh, on what charge? Galen replied coolly. We mustn't be rash, mind fear. On what charge? Bowman finally turned to face the man. I'll leave that up to you. The article needs a new chief. Every time we keep doing this, it just it keeps going down. So I'm just going to do the top three and not do that one. $100 million to spend is not too bad. That, that really means nothing to us. Digging for dirt, though. Galen had ordered his trusted friend and con confidant... Gerhard Vessel to dig up as much dirt on Heinrich Müller as possible as head of the Intel analysis. Uh, Vessel quickly uncovered a few instances of political bribery, but nothing concrete enough to warrant Müller's firing. The man's corruption was hidden with, the, with suspicious efficiency. Where were the conspirators aiding him in return for support? It didn't matter. Galen was naturally going to have to rely on slightly less authentic Intel. It wouldn't be the first time he had fabricated evidence, and he doubted it would be his last. Heinrich Müller, chief of the Ordnung Polizei and embezzler of funds. He could already see the headlines of these state press if they didn't cover it up, of course. Here's a toast to Miller's final week on the job. So how do we do this? Limited, oh, we need to liquidate our assets. Our pre-existing economic policy was no doubt well planned, but in uh, present circumstances, it must be must regrettably be cast aside. We must not focus on preventing our nation from having debt levels so high it destroys our current uh, currency's credibility, lest we repeat the fate of our unlimited Weimar predecessors. Emergency liquidation sales of whatever public assets can we can dredge out of the mess that is our administrative apparatus will help us boost the government's domestic currency levels, allowing us to buffer the worst effects of the debt crisis. One man's rise is another man's fall. Henrik Müller, former director of the Gestapo and chief of the Ordnungspolizei, has been officially discharged from his post following accusations of bribery, corruption, and embezzlement of government funds. While not illegally charged for his crimes, Müller has been stripped of his ranks and banned from any form of military service. General Lieutenant Reinhard Galen, head of the Orpos Militarische Abschirmdienst, Branch has not been appointed as an organization's new chief of the, by the Führer himself. Despite the, this minor triumph, the cancer descent and secrecy continues to grow in the heart of Germania. An internal opposition is coalescing, readying itself to strike against the Führer when the time is right. He is certain of it. Bowman and Galen are prepared for the future. They will hunt down these traitors and slaughter them like rats. We must make the necessary preparations. Oh, good. So we get internal opposition? 
Way less political power, stability worse for our daily command power gain. The dismantle button will become available once we reach 70% control. Is that Levy? I keep saying that. I like saying that. Not bad. Not bad, but not good. Yeah, that debt was in the 330 some. Now it's 340 some. Ooh, oh, that's not good. That is not that good. Um, I'm going to do that guard ahead. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we got to increase that. Uh, how about... Oh, yeah. Definitely increases the civilian factors here. I'm going to pause the game even for this. There you go. You can do that, too, if you want that. Beautiful. Did I miss any place here in uh, the GGR? Not really. Good. You can keep doing that. Uh, very good. Our colonies, our Rex Commissariats, do not need space for anything except for whatever we tell them to build. And... My apologies for the clicking, and thank you. All right. So good. Hodge quotas. Oh, yeah, we have that one, too. Bug of political enemies. There's nothing we can do up top. Okay. Liquidate our assets is an unfortunate thing that we must do, but actually, oh, well. All right. I mean, we've already... Look at that. Look at the control. We were ready to go. Under new management, Galen's desk was overflowing with paperwork, yet he was undeterred with his new position. He was privy to... Every secret the Orpal held, at least nominally, it admit a grudging admiration for his predecessor. Muller defined the Ordnung Spolzai in its modern role, transitioning it from one of many policing and security organizations to the dominant intelligence agency within the Reich. It was almost a tragedy to undo so much of his work, but the fear of demanded results, and Galen had, re had resolved to be the man to deliver them. His first action, as dictated by Borman himself, was total restructuring of the organization under his leadership. And how could he refuse such an offer? The power of the pencil pusher was an oft underestimated mother one. With but a flick of his pen, he could remove Mueller's most trusted men from the contact with one another and send them to the opposite ends of the Reich, yes. With newfound control, he could begin the task of digging out conspiracy rot and stem. The Führer would only hear of good things from now on. He would make sure of it. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Mm. Very good. Slash that debt. Debt is one of the enemies of the Reich. Anything here? Nah, not really. After we liquidate our assets, what shall we do next? We got that one done, which is really good. Helicopters? Ooh, advanced... Ooh. Ooh. Don't mind if we do. Is this a helicopter? Ah, uh, it's not quite a helicopter, but that's okay. We shall have limit consumption. The Reich's people are its greatest strength. This is what we've known since the first rallies in Nuremberg, but their rapidly growing consumption is also our national vulnerability. Already draining fragile resources or resource networks and imperiling our offensive capabilities against our rivals, we must take measures to reduce oil consumption rights. Everything from speed limits to transport details for civilian and military patrols can be controlled. For the sake of the nation, we must make immense sacrifices, and our people, our strength, must go first. Less political power gain, which sucks. Consumer goods factories actually helps out a lot. And growth will decrease? Oh, no, no, no. We've got to start digging. Investigations into rogue elements within the party proceed apace. Summary of ex investigation results follow with regards to the next steps. The Mueller connection, despite Mueller's dismissal and Orpal reorganization, he maintains connections with former contacts and may remain an asset to the suspected conspiracy. His letters to senior elements within the party indicate this is so and remains an avenue of investigation. Allied discontent. Follow-up investigations reveal discontent among senior reformist elements within the party apparatus. Cited reasons include economic slump, misguided foreign policy, and heavy-handed domestic affairs. Surveillance of these elements to ascertain uh, extent of treason remains an option. A conspiracy amongst their own. Fear further investigation reveals conservative party functions or functionaries attempting to undermine party bureaucracy for their own gain. Rooting out this conspiracy may lead to the discovery of the leaders of the dissent faction. Keep digging, Mueller. Uh, Root him out. Maybe we investigate the complaining officials. Let's do that one. That seems like the, the most, I don't know, I'll say enjoyable. Might not be the most important, but the most enjoyable. Now we only get 1.26 political power every day. <sighs> Sadness. But it is what it is. And allied discontent. Preliminary report on the discontent within the right performance wing of the NSAAP. Records or recordings of conversations between members of the reformist wing of the party revealed an undertone of discontent with the current path taken by the party leadership. Issues cited included continuing politicization of the Wehrmacht, economic mishandling, and heavy-handed foreign policy. Further investigation and monitoring of known malcontents will continue. They got these dissident enemies, which we shall go ahead and do integrated guidance radar for better air accidents chance. And the penalty to night operations goes down, as well as bad weather penalties. Very good. But happy 1971, everyone. I forgot to mention that it is 1971. And I think Borman probably only has like 10 years of content, probably. I'm going to assume 10 years, but we'll see what happens, of course. Hold on. Hold a bad word, Boom. 
hold the bad word phone because we just lost 35 billion dollars in debt i don't know what happened and we don't have enough of a deficit to get rid of literally 35 billion because it was a 340 billion the last time i clicked on this but now we're at 305 something is going on help the populace Ooh. Civilian proportional GDP cost goes up, but growth factor plus 15%. Army professional goes a little worse. Or the poverty rate. Oh, do I want to hurt my party rate or my army professionalism? Now, that's not bad. And poverty rate is going up by a little bit higher, but I... Mm, that's already pretty good. Oh, man, that is painful. Oh, man. Oh, we can't do both. Oh, man. Reduces the minimum investment by 10%. More, way more construction speed. Our GDP will take a hit. Our national debt will rise. Oh, man. Volksgemeinschaft. More political power. Poverty rate increase goes up, but even more poverty. More. Oh, oh, oh. Work for the fatherland. Our GDP growth will increase a little bit. That's nice. And actually, the GDP growth for civilian proportionally, the cost will go down. Work for freedom? Oh, I, I think. Oh. I, I gotta help out the populace. I think overall that's a little better. I don't mind if our army professional goes down a little bit because I really hate poverty. I really do. The people of the Reich are our strength, the strength we have often abused in the past. In the face of biting economic stagnation and slow burn inflationary pressure, however, this neglect must end. Amidst opposition from the hawks of the Wehrmacht, Führer Bowman has decreed that the government shall implement one of the largest stimulus packages in the Reich's history to... Uh, ameliorate our economic downturn. This should go some way towards placating the reformists of the Reichstag. God help us, it might even shut them up for five minutes. Industrial com complexity. A memo on Siemens activities during the oil crisis. Due to the shortage of oil in the Reich, uh, industrial production by Siemens has refused or reduced drastically. While this is a natural response, reports have been received from informants within the corporation that the reduced production is not a direct consequence of the shortage, but instead due to orders from higher in the company's hierarchy. Unconfirmed reports may also have claimed that extensive communication has been occurring between the board of directors Directors and the reformist wing, further investigation is warranted. I always knew these corrupt dudes were up to something. I, I can we please get? I know actually, industrial expertise is probably the worst societal development you want to do. It's still good to do, but it's probably the least beneficial. So I don't mind it. If anything had to go down, it would be that one. But can we fix that, please? Probably not during the economic crisis, though. So what do you expect? The consequences of empire. Oh, crap. And the current forecasts don't show anything is getting any better. The situation in the Middle East has caused oil prices worldwide to skyrocket, even though Rex owns sources of oil in Caucasian. Patrol has become prohibitively expensive for the common citizen. Many Germans have instead resorted to cycling or walking to work if they have to work to return to. The economic slump has resulted in upwards of a million Germans losing their jobs. Bormer turned off his TV with a sigh. He was receiving more flack than, for, than was fired in the Battle of Britain, and this crisis wasn't even his fault. He should have expected this crash as soon as the Italians established their empire. They couldn't even be trusted to run a coffee shop. Nonetheless, he's going to have to do something about it, and fast. Somebody give me an idea. We lose some loyalty, so be it doesn't matter. Uh, power from the people, doesn't matter. Stability, kind of hurts. Actually, we can improve that. Uh, GDP will tank. I don't like that. The growth will decrease. Oh, God. Bad words. Bad words. But hey, we can do this. You know what? We can help our stability right here. And I love that. Uh, the president. Reinhard Galen. I love it. Oh, all is not well. And actually, it's not going to be well at all for the rest of this campaign, unfortunately. At this point, I can't really do anything there. So, I, I don't know how much is actually in-game in terms of like content. Just because we're, we're definitely approaching the area where the devs... I had to probably, you know, finish, you know, doing stuff before they released TNO and all the updates for it, so. Um, I mean, just doing this stuff down here, it, it doesn't matter, really. But I like clicking on it. You know what? We're, we have such a great economy, and we're building stuff up so quickly. I don't mind slashing it just a little bit more. It doesn't help us that much. But it's kind of nice. Industrial espionage. Further infiltration of the Siemens facilities has confirmed initial reports that industrial production levels are not correlated with oil supply. In fact, the few shipments of oil that have been received have not been used extensively for production purposes, but a stockpiled layoffs have occurred due to the reduced capacity. Similar reports have been received from informants at IG Fobin. While Fobin's decentralized structure and his extensive network of holding companies make these rumors singularly difficult to verify, both corporations are without a doubt making efforts to conceal their activities from the administration, instead of reporting that the loss in production and capacity out of their own control. Further investigation is strongly recommended. What the heck is going on? A few favorable loans. Interest rates will rise sharply. Oh, I don't like that. Mm, I'm gonna 
do this. How can a Reich long divided unite? To borrow a phrase from the Orientals, the answer obviously is populism. It's worked for us before and it sure as heck is going to work for us again. The Volks Combined Shop or People's Community. As a centerpiece of the NSDAP's national identity policies, boosting domestic unity through public programs and community initiatives. Alas, it has fallen far from its initial state, but Berliners have a saying, do not stop until the whooped or the whipped horse is actually dead. We will move to our populist roots by making concessions to the Reich's reformist elements and implementing more social programs to bring the German citizenry through these trying times. The rate at which a skilled... Hey, there you go. Maybe that's it. The skilled workforce. So industrial expertise might actually increase, which would be great. Fingers and many pies. Your company has made some unusual choices during the crisis here, Abs. You have to forgive me, my fear. But I have many companies which I must split my time between. You must be more specific. Abs leaned back in his chair in his... Well, plush leather chair, I should say. Don't play the fool and don't take me for one. IG fob in a stockpiling oil when it's needed the most. What do you have to say for yourself? Abs is a cigar. I proffered one to Borman who accepted. I am but one of dozen men of Fobin's board of directors, each of which has their own agenda. I must admit, I had noticed some anomalies in the figures, but as I said, I have 50 different companies that each require my attention in the crisis. You deny your pot, Bowman sucked in the cigar, which was excellent. Suck, suck. I do, however. If you intend to investigate the peculiarity further, I would be all too happy to assist. There are many on the board I would be glad to see gone. Oh, look at that cigar. It's pretty long. Your assistance is most welcome. Yeah, even though we purged them, the former still kind of support us. A hidden move. Oh, boy. Now, we could spend political power this. Uh, anyway, I, let's at least get these guys up. Oh, 99%? Hmm, I don't know. I hit a move, though. We've continued monitoring no members of the internal opposition or the course of the crisis. They're getting bolder, recruiting new members, spreading letters of protest. Previously, subtlety was a priority. Now it seems to be expansion to what end? I'm not sure. Bowman sighed. Galen's news, while unfortunate, was almost expected. The crisis was perhaps a dream for any dis dissident, internal or external. Keep track of them. I want to know what the heck is their end game, no matter what they're doing. Of course, Hyde Bowman. He raised his arm and salute and left. Bowman chuckled. You could have always trusted a dishonest man to be dishonest. This was the reason Galen was so useful. An honest man was unpredictable. No one could have guessed when one was about to do something stupid. Back to dealing with more complaints. And we're about to get advanced jet fighters, too. Woo! All right. Very good. A quick checkup. Bowman invited Siemens to visit him as Villa. Why should he? Meeting with the Fuhrer was one of the most foremost privileges of being such an esteemed citizen. He'd hosted plenty of parties for the richest citizens of the Reich, and he'd mastered the art of laughing at their jokes and pretending to like them. As the Verwirtschaftsführer stepped out of the car, then he affixed his fakest smile to his face and stepped forward with open arms. Ah, oh, Bowman! Siemens leisurely saluted before stepping into the embrace. A pleasure as always. A blatant lie, and they both knew it. Indeed, indeed, I hope you'll forgive me for taking you away from your work in this time of crisis. Crisis, but it is my duty to make sure you have all that you need to deal with the situation. Their faces adorned with false grins, and they stepped inside. I can do some investigation of my own. Oh, wife's relief. Ah, oh. an older man, Wilhelm, was walking down the street alone until Peter rushes up, clearly in a panic. The teapot is thrown after him, crashing against the ground with a thud. Peter, or Willie, you gotta help me. My old woman's been throwing a fit, all because I didn't like the coffee she made. She's cranky like this for weeks. Since she's ever got that new job of hers, I simply don't know what to do to snap her out of it. Wilhelm pauses, putting a hand atop his chin as if thinking hard. Have you tried giving her a Frauengold? A friend of mine from the factory tried it, and he says he'd vouch for it with his life. Peter glances at his friend and clearly confused. Frauengold? I've, I've never heard of that. Wilhelm places his hand atop Peter's shoulder, as if educating the younger man. Well, Peter, Frauengold is a tonic that will snap your missus out of her funky no time and get her right back to her old lovey-dovey self. It works like a charm, Peter guesses. I guess I'll give it a shot. Cut to the next day. Peter walks up to Wilhelm, a massive smile on his face as he does so. Peter, what do you know? It's worked like a charm. Marie has been fawning over me all morning. Marie, a woman as blonde as those on propaganda posters, enters the scene, leaning over to give Peter a kiss on the cheek before holding up a box of frown gold. The two smile, placing a hand on each other's shoulder as Marie turns to the camera. Take frown gold and you will bloom. As the frown gold logo appears on the screen, the text appears on the bottom, quickly listing out all the possible side effects of the tonic with some sounding kind of nasty. Who reads those things anyways? Blonde as can be? Sign me up. Anyways. Wow, we don't have a lot of political power, do we? Point wow, this is this is kinda of rare. Point seven nine? We were I am so used to getting over two a day, but oh my goodness, meeting the Vetschafs uh I'm told Siemens has been hit particularly hard by the effects of the crisis. Bowman kept his face as neutral as a placid lake. If Siemens detected the snare, he didn't show it. Indeed, my fear. Production has dropped over a third in all sectors, and we've been forced to lay off an unprecedented number of employees. Unfortunate, but we live in interesting times. Indeed, then why have I been receiving reports that instead of your oil supply being tapped to alleviate the crisis, you have instead been stockpiling? Bowman fixed his gaze to the businessman's refusing to blink. Siemens indeed blinked first, so we didn't avert his eyes. You are remarkably well informed, yes. We have refrained from using the oil. We have... 
But who knows how long this crisis will last? Oil's, you know, like the air to industry. There's no sense thrashing and wasting it now, and instead we can hold our breath and attempt to outlast the Arabs. If the situation lasts long enough, we will indeed rela release our stockpiles. A prudent measure? A suspicious choice. That does make sense. That actually, honestly, that makes a lot of business sense. But I kind of want to keep pushing. I want to see what happens. If they don't like us, I don't care, you know. Where the fear? You know, we have a good time. Uh, it's not paranoia if they're after you. Bowman sipped at his wine, considering the conversation now that he was rid of his guest. Siemens had the answer to one of every single one of his questions, and he hadn't let the mask of pleasantries slip once. That did nothing to ease his worries. Siemens and his kind were snakes without a doubt that he had an explanation prepared only confirmed that his activity was something he preferred to keep under wraps. No, there was something far more to this than what the businessman was telling him. Time to see what they had to say when he was in the room. He picked up his phone and dialed for Agent Kleiner. Hooks. I have another task for you, but we must work for the follow line. Unemployment. Once again, right, Ma is the face of the Reich, erasing the gains we've made ever since the West Russian War. It's, an all, it's enough to make the strongest of men weep, but now is not for the time for mourning. Now is not the time at all. Swift and decisive action is necessary to secure employment. And we have means of producing that security. Booting the slave cast out of the workplaces and moving German workers into these positions instead. Active and incisive propaganda will motivate our nation to take on the burdens of the maintenance. We must all work for the father line in these times. Yes, yes, yes. The Shah of Iran, uh, Iran assassinated. Oh no! Oh no! 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 A simmering discontent. He could see it whenever he left his office, where once he would be greeted by endless rows of salutes, smiling women, cheering crowds. Now only silence. He was lucky to see a single extended arm of the car pass through the streets these days. When the people were poor and hungry, they found that they little to thank their fear for. It wasn't treason, but he knew it wasn't far. With a blank stare, he watched his equally blank people pass by. The silence wouldn't last. Soon there would be riots. What do they want me to do? Invade the Middle East? Okay. And if we want the people's support, I guess the next thing we will do for uh, loyalty, we'll say, is get more... I mean, the, uh, the people are still at 51%, so, I mean, I'm not sure what else to say. Our reformers, I think, are literally all at zero. Yeah, they're all literally at zero. The party bureaucracy, we've made sure that 99% is loyal. But obviously, some people could be more loyal than others. And we're still growing our economy and cutting down our debt. Okay, so look at that. It went up to 310. It was 305. Now it's gone up to 310. Actually, let's check on army professionalism as well. And right now, the Shah of Iran has been assassinated with the Iranian Civil War. Iran, our largest export of petroleum, has collapsed in a civil war. The monarchy was apparently shakier than we gave credit for with the death of the Shah. His widow wife has taken over as head of state. The many rebellious factions within Iran have taken the opportunity to use the chaos to their advantage. Ba'atis, fundamentalists, socialists, and of all more have taken up arms in a massive coalition to destroy the monarchy. We need our allies to come out on top. If they lose, we will lose our rights to their oil fields, which would be disastrous for our economy, which is not even good right now. The monarchists have retreated north and holed up in the mountains, transforming their occupation into a virtual fortress. We need to make haste and send them assistance at once. They will not be able to hold indifferent without our help. We must secure our foreign oil, oil reserves. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, my friends, who will rid me of this turbulent priest? And this man calls himself the rightful heir? Borman couldn't organize an orgy, no. Ho house. Father Ratzinger paused for an effect. A crude metaphor, certainly, but the shock value is worth it. A mixture of gasps and chuckles fill the church. I could, I tell a lie, Borman could organize an orgy if it's the only thing he's focusing on, and it, it most certainly is. A man had failed domestically, he has failed abroad, and he has failed as a person. If he cares an inkling for the good of the nation, he will step down before this crisis worsens. He could almost feel the audience's approval, nodding in agreement throughout the room. Once the sermon was done, there would be hundreds of converts to his cause. I'll have to keep an eye on the Orpo's eyes, or keep out of the Orpo's eyes. Performance loyalty goes up for the church, huh? And behind closed doors, report on the conversations of Siemens. As ordered, Siemens' office and conference room were bugged as by intelligent by agent Flugelos Fledermaus. Complete transcripts of the relevant conversations can be found on the page four onwards. Following the meeting, with a fear of Borman, Siemens with a fear of Siemens arranged a series of meetings with a subordinate, followed by phone conversation. Analysis of the company meeting reveals that Siemens is in fact withholding oil and reducing production not to alleviate the crisis, but to exacerbate it with the aim of turning public opinion against the sitting government. A subsequent phone call made by Siemens confirms their connection to the internal opposition. The phone call was none other than the chief of the party, Chancellor Baldur von Schirach, in which he expressed worry that the Orpo's close to discovering the conspiracy. Von Schirach's ultimate goal is unconfirmed, but documents obtained during the break-in indicate Schirach maintains an office in Germany previously unknown to us. Efforts are underway to locate his office. Von Schirach, you treasonous doggerino. Oh boy. And also, uh, we have decisions here regarding the Iranian, uh, you know, conflict. So I've already done them and just uh, stuff. I mean, it doesn't matter. We're going to win these anyways, but you know what? Oh, we've established an Iranian bomber group. Ooh. 
you know what? I'm just thinking, you know, can you imagine? You're like a German soldier in like 1971. You're going on your helicopter, your transport helicopters. You're surrounded. And you're getting support from attack helicopters. And you're going to fight in the mountains of Iran. I've already sent in planes too, by the way. So, 50 uh, fighters, 10 uh, close air support units. I mean, just... That's got to be crazy. But anyways, we have another focus we could do. A new, a few, a few favorable loans. A regime's friendly relationship with the bankers has not been easy to defend in public, but it has at last become useful to us. The Reich is stricken with debt and our financial capacity is lurching into oblivion. We must look to the banks for the financial assets we need to keep us liquid. Thus, we shall use our contacts with the bankers, specifically Herman Yosef Abs, who receive favorable deals on some loans to help eliminate our immediate debt. So be it. So be it. And my goodness, it's time to go guns a blazing. I'm excited. I'm ready to use these guys. Now, we'll be fighting in hills and mountains, which is going to suck. But Bogdorf is such a good general that I am not too worried about him. What is the enemy that we can take out probably the easiest? That is the most important question. I'm going to assume it's these guys up here. Uh, just because even though there's mountains and such, this would help us take out Tabriz. And I'm glad we can get up to three divisions here. So, Alright. There should be enough conflict here that... Oh, yep. We lost one plane already. Oh, a little bit more lag. Oh, don't tell me our rock is falling apart. Oh, yep, we're doing some ground damage, which is awesome. All right, my friends, to the Briz. Oh, yes, yes, yes. A thousand times yes, no matter what they're sending in. Uh, you guys sit down there. Cut everyone off. To Briz is ours. Go up there, kill them off. Go up here, and then do that. Beautiful, my friends. Actually, just do that. There you go. Hold, actually. Hold, hold, hold. You guys get back over here, because that's looking pretty bad. Send in the support helicopters. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Wait, where did the... Where is everyone? Oh, it's one... Oh, go all, all right there. Cool. Kill them off. Very good. God, I love helicopters too much. Nah, nah, there's no such thing as loving helicopters too much. There's no such thing in the world. Oh my goodness, I hate it when a plan comes together. Urgent, on Bode von Schirach, urgent. With the discovery of von Schirach's clandestine office agent, Fluglosa Fledemaus was assigned to break in and ascertain its purpose. Inside was discovered a safe, which once cracked revealed a set of documents under the name of Helmut Maya. Copies included with the report. Handwriting analysis confirmed Helmut Maya is a pseudonym von, of von Schirach's. Initial analysis of the documents revealed that they include correspondence with the party members, including Heinrich Müller. Full analysis is ongoing. What are you hiding, my traitor? Begin the assault on Sanad Sanandaj. That should be enough for them. There we go, my friends. Military austerity. Oh, we have. Oh, I forgot about that. Minus 22 million. Oh, GB growth is a little better, too. Very good. All right. We gotta get, kill these guys off. But with them capitulated, I think it'd be good to get rid of these guys, too. I don't want to try this, but we gotta try this. You're gonna help out. Keep us alive for now. Very good. Oh, boy. And can we win right here? That's the most important, important thing, voicing complaints. Bowman was monitoring the situation in Frankfurt with nervous interest. It wasn't that he feared not its outcome. A few rebel rousers would be arrested, that the rest dispersed. No, it was a fact or the situation set a dangerous precedent. That these protesters had even considered voicing the complaints of the government's handling of the oil crisis was a bad sign. If it received the publicity that it had hoped for, these protests risked spreading across the whole Reich. Lack of oil had almost killed the regime in its infancy. Now it risked doing the same when it was fully fledged. We would have to make sure that the Orpol dealt with the protesters sufficiently harshly. Get it in there and crack some skulls. So be it. Oh, wow. They're all killing each other. That's fine. Uh, go in here and then do that. There we go. I wanted to encircle these guys. That's the most important thing. Come on. Come on. Don't get encircled. Don't get encircled. There we go. Immediately begin attacking. They're all dead. Uh, happy guys hold. Beautiful, my friends. And that's how we roll. Now, they're getting dangerously close to Tehran. we got to push these pieces of garbage back. You're defeated, which is good. You're all going to come right here, and we're going to circle that division right there. How many men have we lost? Oh, quite a few. 1,300. Oh, I guess, yeah, just go that way. That's fine. There you go. Tehran cannot fall. Get to home. A few favorable loans. Back to black. Despite all the setbacks we've encountered, we have finally done it. The Reich has survived the oil crisis, and a full recovery is expected to take place within the next few financial quarters. Once the economy truly settles, we can begin to grow the economy just as it did in the post-war boom. A new era is on the horizon, the greatest and most prosperous time that has ever been seen since since the history of the Reich began. Heil Fair Bowman, Heil the Reich. Yes, yes, yes. Now we have their capital. Very good. Um, 
I wonder if we could just go right here. Cut all these divisions off. That would be an amazing thing to accomplish. Uh, where are the divisions? Well, let's shore this up a little bit nicely. Nicer. There you go. That's a little better. Missile job. Uh, urgent. The goal of the inner party cabal. Urgent. Final analysis of the documents found in Baldur von Chirac's office has conclusively revealed the ultimate goal of the inner party cabal. By analyzing communication between him, other senior members of the cabal, and the board of directors of Siemens AG, the Orpel has come to the unanimous conclusion that von Chirac's goal is to overthrow the current party leadership and the installation of himself as Fuhrer. Agent Kleiner Fuchs requests an immediate meeting with the Fuhrer to determine the next steps. The next step is his death. Keep these guys in place. Help out down here. Good. Uh, move up, move up, move back. Summary before execution. Galen's mirrored sunglasses reflected a rictus grin. The Fuhrer's face was twisted and ugly, and his fingers were flexing like he had already had von Chirac's throat in his grip. Excellent work, Agent Fuchs, he said without a hint of satisfaction. Thank you, my Fuhrer. He wasn't sure what else to say with Borman in his state. He had the feeling many people were about to die and would very much like not to be one of them. Might I ask you what you, your next steps are to be? Next step, Borman chuckled without humor. I think that it is obvious. Treason is a cancer that must be dug out at its root. I want a list of everyone who has ever spoken to these traitors. I want a list of their families. I want you to start digging graves. Galen nodded. With your permission, I will mobilize the Orpo immediately. You have it. Get out. Startled by the brusqueness of this reply, Galen rose and stepped outside the door. Once he closed the door, he stood stationed for a moment, curious, behind the door. Here the fear exhale, slow and long. He heard himself rise from the chair, then for ten solid seconds without pause, Bubman let a wordless, protected scream of pure, vehement rage. When the sound of breaking furniture began, Galen set off towards his office. It's a remarkable relief to sign the death warrants. Uh, look at all these guys. That is literally 12 plus 3 is 15 divisions. 15 divisions are going to die because of my helicopters. Our helicopters, really. I love it. Send more material. Bowman's jaw clenched as he read the newspaper in front of him. It should be illegal for all intents and purposes. It was illegal, yet nonetheless, there was a... There was not black and white. Party officials voiced concern at government policies. He could arrest them, without a doubt. He probably would. That would be closing the barn door after the horses had been bolted. However, it would also not solve the root problem. These troublemakers were only a symptom of the underlying problem, one that was not ready to solve. As soon as this clique of self-serving clerks were dealt with, another would pop out of the woodwork, hoping to advance their own careers by taking the bold yet foolish stance of opposing his administration. This was the problem that he had to solve the root issue of, and he didn't know how. Time is running out. Oh boy. Alright, so all of you guys... We must take these guys out. Wow, it does not look good for us right now. Ooh, we have Fort Buster? Siege Artillery. Uh, are there forts here? No, there's no forts, so that's not, that'd be kind of a waste. But they are running out of supplies, which is the most important thing. I'll let you move around a little bit more. Oh, what a shame. Have at it. We've lost quite a few soldiers here, but... It's worth it in the end. I know it's worth it. Uh, the Freiwillings core. Well, we could do that, but now nah. We're good. Eh, nothing over there, huh? Central America, Middle East. Nothing in the Middle East, which is kind of disappointing. Get off the streets. The Orpo had never been assembled in this number. Every officer, junior and senior, ill and sick, on duty, and even pulled from the retirement. If one was to gaze out of the window, they would see more officers than they would see civilians. For one would have to be a fool to stay on the streets today. The tension filled the air. Even those too young to remember the party's first rise knew what was coming from thugs champing at the bit. To swing their batons as grizzled veterans weary of violence, Orpo barracks were literally overflowing. They had been told to be ready, and they were ready. They would do their duty, no doubt, but they weren't fools. The question was, if they could live with themselves once it was done. Await your orders. I better collect on this. The Black Web in the heart of Germania. The black web of conspiracy had spread through the Reich, its dark tendrils ensnaring everything in reach. Heinemann, Globke, and Spadra schemed with their former sheep in the intelligentsia and the hail. Von Siemens and his corporation watched on with gleeful anticipation and bated breath at the heart of it all, said Boda von Schirach, spinning his web with the aid of those treacherous conservative bureaucrats, plotting Bormann's destruction. Bormann could spin his own webs. He could forge his own conspiracies and outmaneuver these fools. With sharp political cunning and a firm hand, he could strengthen his hold on power and punish those who had tried to weaken it. But only a weak man will play the conspirators at their own game. Game. What would Hitler have done if not destroy the conspiracy with ruthless efficiency? Weakness and compromise were foreign to national socialism. Only the strongest may survive. Bormann could take no chances. Like Alexander and the Gordian knot, he would raise his sword and slice through the, this black web in a single stroke. Execute. Oh, the church is actually in opposition to us. I didn't realize that. Not for much longer, though. Back to black. 
Oh, good. And after that one, we can't do that side, so let's do the new corps. A general field marshal, Rommel's legendary, and his exploits in Africa are world-renowned. The Africa Corps blitzed its way through North Africa, winning victory after victory, pushing the Anglos and the puppets back deep into Egypt and Sudan. Though it's been several decades that he has not forgotten these lessons. Even now, our general staff is pouring through old memoirs, after action reports and gathering up old veterans to relearn the harsh lessons of the de desert sands. What's the point of our suffering if we aren't going to learn from our experience? Good point. Onto name and Adla. The wheels of change turn and turn, crushing everything beneath it. The old Nung's bullet's eyes have been deployed to much march on the major cities of the Reich on the orders of the Galen of Reinhard Galen, I should say. From Vienna to Germania, armored vehicles are closing off the streets and roads while armed officers push towards their targets. There'll be no compromise, there'll be no mercy. Traitors will cower before the might of the Fuhrer and his loyal soldiers. Martin Bowman shall remain master of Europe while the treacherous rats, Aryans in name only, suffer the consequences of betraying the German Reich. Onto name and Adla is underway. Unfortunately, this earth is not a fairy land, but a struggle for life, perfectly natural and therefore extremely harsh. Ooh, more decisions. <gasps> we have done it, my friends. We are out of the crisis. Not bad. Ooh, debt is looking. That interest is looking really bad. Oh my goodness, look at that. Our national debt is below our total GDP. We have done it. We have. I'm not gonna say save the economy, but it is much, much better. We are in a much better position to be in. I am excited for this. When is the next research done? Actually, one day. Um, how are we doing here? The bureaucratic badge, which we all read once I click on this. So, to all officers, those of you who will receive this briefing will be tasked with purging the NSDAP bureaucracy during the Unternehmen and Adler. Please, please refer to the watchers attached to this document. All named individuals are to be arrested and taken to holding cells in the nearest concentration slager. Those who violently resist are to be shot. The names circulated or circled in black are to be interrogated on suspicion of treason. Please refer to the attached documents for further details. Those who are determined to be active participants in internal opposition will be shot. Those who are determined to be unwitting participants will be dismissed from their office. The names circled in red are to be shot on sight. Heil Bowman, Agent Klena Fuchs. Tearing out the traitors, root and stem. I'm getting too into this, man. Oof. And I'm enjoying it, though. That's the most important thing. If you're not enjoying something, what's the point of doing it, right? 885 factories. A final cabinet meeting. The Reich's Minister for Propaganda and Public Enlightenment slammed the car door shut and tugged off his black gloves. He breathed in the chilly morning air with satisfaction and strolled towards the Reich's Kanzlei, ignoring the salute of the Orpal Guards. And pushing through the door, Bob Dov von Schirach had warned him not to attend the cabinet meeting and he'd raise his own excuse. A ridiculous gesture, Werner Naumann thought to himself, but what better way to arouse suspicion than refuse to attend a meeting about the Middle East than the Fuhrer had described as vital? Sorry I'm late, Naumann panted as he entered the cabinet room, pretending he had been running. He slumped down into his chair and began pulling the documents from his briefcase. Eight confused Reich's ministers and seven empty chairs were staring back at him. You're not the only one, Reich's minister Scheel replied brazenly. Where's the Fuhrer? Where's Walter? Reich's minister Lange, or Lange muttered nervously, tugging on his collar. He's never late. The door suddenly burst open and a dozen armed Orpal troops barged in the room. Raise your hands and bend over the table, one of them roared, pointing his gun directly into Nauman's face. The Reich's minister obeyed immediately. His whole body went numb with shock. The table shook as Shio's fist was slammed into it. He could hear Long screaming his innocence. The cold realization dawned on him, chilling his sweating body. He, I'm going to die. Wow. Reformist resistance. Five of five have broken out throughout the, na throughout the nation. Heavily armed, all the Nung's units have teamed up with bombing loyalists in the hair. The attempt to storm barracks, infiltrate garrisons, and march on major military installations throughout the Reich has resulted in mass resistance from the, those subservient to Hans Spadel and the reformist movement. Once more, German fires upon German in the streets of the cities. While the combined forces of Bormann's loyal soldiers are granted to win these skirmishes, the most intense battles taking place is at the OKW headquarters. The exact location of Spadel is uncertain, but his followers are fighting to the death to push back against the onslaught. When the dust settles and the blood is washed away, nothing will rival the Wehrmacht's loyalty to the fear of... This will teach them subservience. I'm not even touching this. Holy crap! You just saw three events come up. Four events! Holy crap! The corporate purge. The corporate behemoth that is IG5 and is infested with its own vermin. Powerful schemers throughout the company, including men within the board of directors itself, have worked independently of Hermann Josef Abbs to conspire with von Schurk's conservatives and the reformist allies. The underhanded deals have been exposed. With the help of Galen and Und Abbs, Bormann has ordered a total purge of IG5 and no level of cooperation will be spared. The avarice. 
avaricious opportunist. Found in all corporations or gamblers by heart and trade. Unfortunately for the gamblers of IG Farben, they bet on the wrong horse. They shall be fired. The folly of religion, along as the fan fantastical nonsense of Christianity, plague German culture and society, never has such a dangerous institution as organized religion simultaneously threatened the state. While being revered by the common people, due to the party's actions over the last few decades, the influence of the church is now barely political, but its permeation into the daily life of the German has remained a thorn in our side. At long last, things are about to change as part of Unternehm and Adler. Christian churches throughout the Reich will be completely and utterly eliminated, and the practice of Christian faith will be restricted to personal belief and late-night prayers. Soon, of course, even this will dissipate as the people realize the foolishness of their beliefs. National Socialism and Christianity are irreconcilable. Attempt to coup. Hans Spado ran his fingers over the map of Germania with one hand and wiped the sweat from his brow with the other. After the destruction of the military's plot years ago, the failed marshal had been... Uh, been foolish enough to place faith in the Weasley words of Martin Bowman, who had shattered his own promises upon his solidifications of power. All was lost. Reports had come in from the nation. The reformers were being crushed by Bowman's slugs. Victory, once so close to being touched, had mockingly drifted away. No matter, Shibato's men were marching towards the Rex Council Live, preparing to drive a bullet right between the fear's eyes. Rex Marshal, a young man, called out as he burst into the barracks, panting. Our troops at the head of the march have been cut off and encircled. Many are laying down their weapons, fleeing or suicidally charging at the enemy. The location must have been leaked. Military tr troops are surrounding this barracks as we speak. So be it. Hans Spider felt the last vestiges of energy seeped out of him. Oh, what could have been? Now the Reich was all but doomed to collapse. He took out his pistol and marched towards the door. The young soldier was blocking the way. God, how old was he? Eighteen? Get out of the way, soldat. I'm not going to let them string me up with piano wire. He gave a faint smile, threw open the door, and ran out to face the gunshots. The former's puppet lies dead. Er ist tot. The Siemens raids. What is going on? Ernest von Siemens screamed into the phone. Why are Opal officers raiding our building? Holy cow, three other people are calling me. Hold on, yes, yeah, slow down, slow down. Who did they just arrest? Hello? Oh no. Uh, von Siemens writes a napkin to his head, dabbing gently. Wolfking, listen, I'm on several calls at the moment. What did you just say? They're raiding your offices? You're on the other side of the country? The door burst open and a dozen armed Orpo officers filed inside. They raised their hands or guns and unison. Put your hands on your head, one of them shouted. Now turn around, you're under arrest on suspicion of treason. The men locked a pair of metal handcuffs onto his wrists and hauled him from the room, ignoring his cries of denial. A loyalist to the Fuhrer will be appointed as a new CEO of Siemens. We must completely dismantle Siemens. It will be nationalized by the government. Completely dismantled. Industrial expertise will begin to... Uh, oh. Ooh, look at that. Oh, minus one. Oh, that hurts. Ooh, I don't want to hurt that more. A loyalist. We must have a loyalist. Uh, the GDP will sink. Well, it didn't sink that low, so... Breaking the intelligence here. As instructed by Reinhard Gehlen, Ordnung's Polizei forces are storming universities throughout the country to seize the enemies of the state, professors, and student leaders who surrender have been arrested and thrown into Orpo bands to face punishment for their crimes, while the few who violently resisted have been gunned down where they stood. And a major blow to the reformist cause, those sympathizers have spread their poison on university campuses. The path has been paved for total intellectual and cultural restructuring of the Reich's intelligentsia. Every educated person is a future enemy. Well, crap. Rapidly worsen. The fate of the churches. The sermon was interrupted by the faint screeching of tires and the sounding or the pounding of boots on gravel. Father Joseph Ratzinger begged for forgiveness with his trademark smile and wink and strolled past a row of churchgoers to the entrance doors. The shouting outside was fierce and blunt. He felt an unnatural chill shoot down his spine but opened the doors nonetheless. May I help? The pastor's voice caught in his throat. A squadron of armed and armored men were marching straight towards him. Father Ratzinger relaxed after a brief moment of panic. They were Orpo officers. Are you at the right place, officers? This has been no disturbance here. A glove fist punched the wind out of his stomach. Father Ratzinger benched over with a wheeze, clutching his belly in agony as the officers barged past him and screamed at the churchgoers to flee. He looked up with bleary eyes and were methodically seizing everything they could lay their hands on. Some of them were smashing Bibles. Others grabbed the crucifix at the far end of the church. Before he regained his strength and announced his objections, a pair of handcuffs were rent or hands wrenched his arms behind his back and placed cool metal handcuffs over his wrists. What did I do, Father Ratzinger pained? Uh, panted painfully. Tears filled his eyes as he watched the desecration unfold. The story of a single church repeats across the Reich. Oh, we can invest in stuff. Yes. Yes. And not that. Anything else? Ah, uh, some more weapon shipments. African Cabal. I'm done with African Cabal. Because there's nothing we can do with that. And how about 10 more events, maybe? Domestic manufacturing, not bad. The New Rocks Minister. A pleasure to talk to you once again. The familiarly gruff voice came from the phone. Hemen Yosef Abs grinned and he held the phone tighter. A pleasure to receive you, my Fuhrer. Heil Bowman. Abs amused himself by giving a limp salute to the painting of the countryside opposite his desk. I trust the corporate reshuffling is going well. The Persian IG Farben is complete. The traders have been arrested. Looks like I'll have a lot of restructuring to do, Abs chuckled. He knew something important was coming, but he did not want to rush it. Hey, Abs, Bowman continued, confirming the man's suspicions. I must praise your commitment to the party and the nation. You could have easily aided the traders, but you instead chose to cooperate. 
cooperate with the government. With your extensive economic knowledge as a member of the IG Falcon's board of directors, I believe you would make an irreplaceable Rex Minister for Economics. There's a new opening as of today. It would be my honor. I'm surprised you guys aren't dead yet. Never mind. And we've won with the Imperial State of Iran. I would have loved. I should have actually this should have seen how well they did. And you guys, there you go. A victory in Iran. It was all but assured, my friends. I knew it was all but assured. There you go. We did it with our help. The monarchists have triumphed in their civil war. Our access to the oil reserves is once again secured, and we can resume production and shipments. Our help was deceived in turning the tide, and our allies have not forgotten this. We have earned a lot of goodwill with the monarchists as a result. But more importantly, we have oil, and they join the Einheits back. Beautiful, my friends. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, I love it. Imperial State of Iran. Ah, oh, Mama Farah Pahlavi. And I want to do one more focus before we end this episode. It was not the cold air that showed his body into numbness. Baldur von Shirak watched the sights or race past the car window, trying to form a poetic verses in his head to distract himself from the miserable truth. A meal day earlier, he had been serving the nation as the chief of the party chancellor. Now, von Shirak's future was balanced on a knife's edge, quite literally, if Borman got his pleasant hands on him. Opal was not yet lost, though. He would bunker down in his heavily guarded compound and wait the consequences of Borman's sudden actions. If the mobilization of the Opal, of the Opal backfired, he would emerge victorious and take his rightful place as a fear of Germany. If not, he couldn't bear thinking about it. The Reich would gradually collapse under Borman's paranoid tyranny, and there would be no one left alive to save it. What would they do to his dear Henry? Or Henny? He fought back the tears as he imagined as images of his wife flashed past. What would they do to his children? Rick Rickard? Or Richard? Sprightly young Richard. A glory of death waves to me. <sighs> We've done it, my friends. And I know this video is a little bit longer. It's like, maybe as long as the last one, but it doesn't matter. Infrastructure modernization? Is that good? Um, I'm not sure what to click on, so it'll do it naturally. Oh wait, hold on. We have how many slaves? Thir four, a little less than 14 million. That's not bad. The compound siege. If one were to stare down from the sky, they would see what appeared to be a rectangular rock surrounded by swarming ants of all shapes and sizes. Hail soldiers and armor vehicles roared past, or roamed past the compound, waiting for their orders. Balde von Chirac himself, the mastermind behind the treacherous anti bowman conspiracy, was encountered or ensconced with its, within its concrete walls. An immediate attack would lead to an inevitable victory, but the compound was not lightly guarded. The Orpal and Hale officers in charge were discussing how to best retrieve von Chirac without an acceptable loss of life on their side. Negotiation with the guards, negotiation with the largest of the target himself, or the Orpal agent infiltration. And they never had to make a decision. The sounds of rotor blades slicing the air cut through the general noise of the siege. A few moments later, a small black helicopter rose from the roof of the compound, thrusting towards or forwards with dangerous desperation. The officers gave the order to fire, and the sounds of gunshots erupted through the air. A rocket soared upon with the grace of an eagle smashed into the tail of the escaping machine. The helicopter spun wildly out of control, black smoke trailing it as it raced down to meet the roof of the compound once again. For a split second, for the men on the ground, the helicopter vanished from view. Then a huge blossom of orange flame and jagged debris erupted into the air and scattered over the troops as a building began to collapse. Von Schurich has been extinguished. The performance section has been completely dismantled, my friends. We have done it. Oh, look at that. It's The church has been completely dismantled. Holy cow. I was looking to see if we had anyone here that was like not loyal to us, but wow, the calm after the storm. Wine flows into Borman's glass. Pride swells in ha Galen's chest. Blood runs throughout the cities of Germany. Christian churches have been eliminated from society. Their property is confiscated for the state and their most divisive priests thrown into prison to indulge their fantasies in solidarity. Opportunistic actors in IG Farben have been arrested while the powerful CEO and military sympathizer Edmund Galenberg is due to be hanged for treason. The Bosch military's coup saw the death of Ferdinand Schona, whose body was found dead in a barracks. His most loyal officers, such as Otto Ernst Reimer, were swiftly executed alongside the treacherous conservative and illiterate uh, militarist bureaucrats whose bullet-ridden bodies has been tossed into unmarked pits. Nine members of Bormann's cabinet, including his minister Kurt Lang, Werner Naumann, and Gustav Adolf Scheel, have been arrested by the Opel and are due to be hanged with piano wire. Heinrich Mueller, who was captured during the chaos of the purge, is set to join them. The event will be recorded for Bormann's personal viewing. The new cabinet has been formed to serve the fear with undying loyalty. Gerhard Klopp has been named as new chief of the party chancellery, with a powerful IG Farben shareholder, jo Hermann Josef Arves, as the new minister, Reich's Minister for Economics. The most violent act seen in the German Reich since the horrors of the Burger Creek continued in the span of a single day. By the end of the week, when due justice is carried out, the death toll will be in the thousands. German society may be disguised or disgusted and scared of these recent events, but it is not the duty of the masses to fret over internal political matters. To live a thousand years. I was hoping we get the uh, second night of the Long Knives event. And I, as soon as I said it, we got it. Cool. Always one death away from Utopia. Do we have any... Okay. 
Oh, der Markt ist ja Zukunft. My gosh, what the winkel. The neighboring grocer stared at the gigantic Hattie that stood next to his tiny grocer. I'm dead. Hans, Hans, are you seeing this? What the waved up a Hans or a customer of his? What, what, what is, who authorized this? This is a monstrosity. It'll drive all the local business into bankruptcy. I know we've got to stop this. Walter and Hans sat for hours, gathering people to protest. The group gathered and marched on the Hattie. They shouted and chanted for days on end. Nothing changed, no matter how much. Now, matter... No matter how much Walter and others yelled, the Hattie remained. Eventually, the protest, uh, protest died down. It wasn't worth the waste of time on a simple grocery store. Walter sat dejectedly outside the soon-to-be-closed door. All the smiling faces of customers and children gawking at what little candy lay on the shelves. The joy of helping an old widow with her bags all gone. Walt Walter wondered if the Fuhrer was really right about the mega corporations helping small towns. Maybe he wasn't. Weren't there plans to protest soon? And my goodness, look at that. That's so bad. Oh, my goodness. We got better agriculture, though. And poverty rates going better. This is going bad. Not looking too bad, though, here. And we shall finish this episode with... You know what? Let me know what we should do. Should we do... Get rid of the Troublesome? Or all men who bend to their will? Let me know in the comments below. Heat of the desert, though. The desert is harsh. The heat is brutal and the sand is endless and gets into everything and the terrain is unforgivable. Unforgiving, unbarren, barren, and difficult for conventional vehicles. For the unprepared, the desert isn't just another unforgivable battlefield. It's a graveyard. That is why we are retooling our equipment for desert warfare. Sand gets into everything. We need a regular, reliable farm that can handle that environment like the AK-47. Resupply points are few and far between, so... We need to equip our men with enough munitions, fuel, food, and water last week. Our current uniforms are wholly insufficient for an air de uh, arid environment. We need a desert uniform that keeps our men cool, yet protected. Our vehicles we, that are going to send will also need minor retooling. There's much work to be done, but when it is, our expeditionary forces will be deployed at un- and they will be unmatched. Well, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this long episode of TNO. If you enjoyed it, please, I recommend leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow to see what else Bowman's Path has in store for us. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.